Hello, and welcome to Tune In. Tune In is a new sideshow on this channel. It's a little shorter and easier to edit than my regular Eric vs. Everything videos. So you can expect a lot more of these in between the longer, bigger Eric vs. Everything videos. Like Eric vs. Everything, this show is going to be mostly about cartoons because I'm an adult. One, two, three, four. Today's episode is going to be about my top 10 favorite cartoons. I don't necessarily think these are the greatest cartoons of all time. They're just the ones who've had the biggest impact on me personally and the ones I like the most. I was planning on this being one long, one through 10 video or 10 through one or whatever. But um, as I was writing this, I was realizing that I had a lot to say. And I didn't want to make like a 30 minute video because that is not the precedent I am setting for the series. This is gonna be short, God damn it! So I'm splitting it up between 10 to six and then five to one. Without further ado, let's start at number 10. The Loud House is one of Nickelodeon's newest cartoons, created by Chris Savino. It stars Lincoln Loud, the only boy in a family of 10 sisters. Each sister has a distinct personality and quirk, and the first episode does a fantastic job of displaying that to you. Within the first five minutes, you get a great understanding for who each of them are. The show isn't exactly groundbreaking, but it's not really reaching for a Steven Universe or Adventure Time level of depth. It's just a fun and wacky and heartfelt kids show. The animation is really well done, and all the character movements are exaggerated just right. Even the sound effects are great and creative. The show is also heavily inspired by classic comic strips like the Peanuts, and it wears its influences on its sleeves, but it never seems dated or like it's trying to live in the past. It comes off to me more as an update than just a copy-paste of old tropes. The Loud House is a funny and sweet little show. It's pretty squarely aimed at kids, but there's enough references and jokes that I think adults can find something good in here too. Perfect. So, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be one or two people who are upset by how low this is on my list. Now, don't get me wrong, I think this show is great, and I see its strengths. It's just not one of my absolute top five best ever greatest show of all time. Fuck my ass, I love this show, it's my favorite cartoon of all time. It's good. It's pretty good. So let's talk about it. Gravity Falls is a Disney XD series created by the only man who may own more flannel than me, Alex Hirsch. The main characters are twin siblings, Dipper and Mabel Pines. They're sent to spend the summer with their great uncle Stan, who lives in the strange town of Gravity Falls, a town that hides many dark secrets. The show itself is mostly a mystery of the week kind of deal, with the kids discovering a new secret about the town every episode. It also has an overarching story that ties the entire show together. One thing I really respect and love about the show is that the creator knew exactly what story he wanted to tell and didn't let the show overstay its welcome. It ended just when it needed to end and it had a fantastic and emotional ending. The reason it's so low on this list just has to do with my personal preferences. The humor of the show doesn't always gel well with me, it's a bit too in your face for my tastes. But it's still a fantastic and well written show with tons of lovable characters. I'd say check it out but you've, you've seen it. But you know what, it's a short show so see it again! Harvey Beaks is a Nickelodeon cartoon created by C.H. Greenblatt. It follows the adventures of the title character, Harvey Beaks, and his two best friends, Fee and Foo. Harvey's a bit of a square, but in the sweetest way possible. He's very kind and tame and likes to clean and follow rules. Meanwhile, his best friends, Fee and Foo, are much more rebellious, constantly up to mischief and making messes. There's a lot to love about this show. It has a very unique art style. The character designs are pretty simple, but they're very charming and just fucking adorable. The background are gorgeous. Just look at these. By far, my favorite thing about the show is the vibe, which might be weird, but just let me explain. It's really chill and laid back and has a lot of heart. I can't help but smile when I watch these characters get into trouble and see how much they deeply care about and love each other, despite how different they all are. If you can, please check this out on Nicktoons. It's a quality show. I feel like this might be a bit of a controversial pick, so let me explain. Bean Puppy Cat is a really good show that got the short end of the stick. Bean Puppy Cat is an animated series created by Natasha Allegri. It follows the not so normal life of Bee and her strange kind of pet Puppy Cat. It started as a pilot on Cartoon Hangover's YouTube channel and a Kickstarter was made to fund a full series. I actually backed this when it first launched, a decision that I never, ever regretted. After a year, the first episode of the series aired and it was noticeably different. 
The character designs were much more simplistic and the story didn't seem as focused as the pilot. Many people, myself included, were initially very upset about the changes. A lot of the fanbase became even more annoyed when the show kept on getting constantly pushed back and then was moved from YouTube onto Verve or VRV or whatever the fuck. An app that viewers had to pay to use. For a long time, the show had actually left a bad taste in my mouth. But one day, I decided to sit down and rewatch the first four episodes and something clicked. I was able to see the show for what it was, without any of the expectations or drama. And once I really, truly saw it, I loved it. The show meanders. It doesn't have a real point, and despite what the pilot might have made it seem like, there's no central plot. It's just about these characters and what we see of their lives. The character designs, while simple, are very cute and likable. And oh my god, the backgrounds. Look at this shit! The show isn't really about answering questions, which can be really frustrating at times and probably would turn a lot of viewers off completely. But I kind of love that about the show. Sure, I'd love more backstory into certain characters' past and how they ended up where they are, but the show isn't about that. It's a small window into moments of their lives. I totally understand how it could bother most people, because it definitely bothered me at first too. The pilot seems to promise answers and conclusions, and you're never really given that in the series. Instead, you're given small nuggets of the weird and beautiful lives of these characters. A part of me wishes there were more, but for what it is, I absolutely love it. Does this show need any motherfucking introduction? It's the goddamn Batman! Batman the Animated Series. It revamped the DC Animated Universe and rejuvenated the Batman mythos. Not only did it create characters who became official parts of the DC Universe, like Harley Quinn, but also created some of the best and most interesting versions of already existing characters, such as this show's Batman, Mr. Freeze, Scarecrow, and of course... <laughs> The Joker. Art is by nature subjective, but if there is any objective truth when it comes to art, it's that Mark Hamill's Joker is the best Joker of all time, bar none. No matter who you are or how old you are, when you read a Joker comic, the voice in your head is undoubtedly Mark Hamill. This cartoon took Batman and its audience seriously. It didn't water itself down for kids and it didn't pander for fanboys. It simply did its best to tell the best Batman stories it possibly could. I loved the show as a kid, but I appreciate it a lot more as an adult. It was dark, but it wasn't brooding or edgy. It had a soul and a sense of humor, and was just a fantastic telling of the adventures of one of the most loved heroes of all time. Alright guys, so that was 10 through 6. Don't worry, 5 through 1 will be up pretty soon. Be sure to subscribe and hit notifications so you'll know when the next video comes out. And thank you for staying tuned in. That's not what this is gonna, it's not the outro. It's terrible. Sorry. I'm sorry. Red leather, yellow, yellow, red leather, yellow, yellow, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, yellow, leather, red leather, red leather, red leather, fuck! keeping that in. <laughs> Can't wait for her to see that. <laughs> do you see what you make me do? <laughs> Kidding. I love you.